tell them big dollars a verse, ain't got the cash. I could double dad at my next gig, opening for one hit wonders. I'm up next, kid. That's what everybody say, everybody lie. Everybody don't live life, but everybody die. Mic check. One, two. It's your boy DJ Press, aka the bad guy. Day Summit Phoenix Edition. Shout out to my guy, Scott Morris, B Moss. They're in the building, but they brought some friends with them. And I just been talking to them on the side, you know what I'm saying? You know, trying to pick their brain. Um, right now, I got a guy, a homie, a very dope artist by the name of TJ. To the foreplay. Mm -hmm. What's good, y'all? Talk about that, because you, you got a little, you got a saying that goes along with your. Yeah, trademark, by the way. I own the shit. Uh, TJ foreplay, my name's a joke. Pause. I'm not. You said that like one day and it just stuck. Mm -hmm. My dad thought it was corny, so that's why I kept it. So every time you say that, are you talking to your dad? No, but yeah. you know how it is. I mean, parents yeah. try to give you advice and you, most people don't take them. Mm -hmm. But like for the most part, I listen to what he said. But that one, I was like, nah, man, I get better reaction from people when I do that. And he's like, yeah, he's like, that sounds corny. He's like, you can't go to New York and say that. And then I went to SOBs and said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how long have you been making music? Uh, about two years now. I started writing in 2021. Uh, I was kind of going through... I wouldn't call it a midlife crisis per se, but you know, pandemic happened, broke up with my girl. Um, there were a lot of things that needed to change in my life. And I watched this TED talk from Kid Cudi called Hi, I'm Scott. And for whatever reason, that inspired me to start writing. Um, and I went home that day, wrote a few songs, and then went to the studio, recorded them, and put out an EP called Caution uh, Contents Hot back in September of 21. But let's talk about that, that first joint, though. Um, the Word. first song you wrote, what was it about? Uh, the first song I wrote was called The Detour. It's uh, the final track on that EP. Um, and it was basically about what I was just going through at the time, where I felt like my life was going in two different directions. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the metaphor, the entendre, euphemism, whatever the lyrical device is called for it, of the detour of you, you have the opportunity to continue doing what you're doing or you can change things up and try something new. So that mm -hmm. was what I was trying to implement in that song. Your music, because um, when, you, when you perform, you, you do a freestyle every time. Yeah. And that one from the greats, man. I, I got that from J. Cole. Because I don't like introductions, man. And, and I noticed that if you have bars, people are going to listen to you. And you have everyone's attention by the end. Then you can say, yo, what's up? Mm -hmm. And that's how everybody knows, all right, he about to start. He going in. You know, and it's foreplay. Yeah. Now the sound. You got, a, you got an interesting voice. Yeah. Where did that come from? I, I'll be honest, man. I was just in the studio messing around. Like, this voice that you hear now, I started rapping and I didn't like it. So I started going down. I pitched it up an octave. And my engineer was like, yo, that's hard. Like, whatever it is that you're doing to pitch your voice up, keep doing that because it sounds different. So when somebody goes on Spotify, can they hear the two different voices? Yeah. You can hear the progression of my voice from that EP to more of my, to some of my more recent singles. You can hear mm -hmm. the inflection. I'm starting to figure out where to, where to put yeah. my voice on the track, you know what I'm saying? Well, you watched the Kid Cudi joint, but what other artists influenced you? Uh, I guess it's going to date me a little bit, but I'm really influenced by Native Tongues. So, like, the Jungle Brothers, Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul. Rest of Development, Queen Latifah, Moni Love, Most Def, Talib Kweli. Anybody that had an actual lyrical message, substance, and the shit was catchy, that's where I live. So this is the important question. Yeah, yeah. You don't listen to newer music. I do. So who I do, but currently are you listening to? like Jid. Okay. J.I.D. Um, I mean, he's not a rapper per se, but Anderson Pac is one of my favorite artists. Mm. Just from how he presents his music, how he just talks his shit, man. And I it's like, smooth. Man. Yeah, I like that you're not... Doing the obvious, and you're not saying like J. Cole and... No, I mean, I'm influenced by Cole, Kendrick, all them, but I mean, yeah. I'm not like them. Right. I know when, when people always like, you should remind me of Kendrick, it's because I got messy hair. I get it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay. but, you know, anytime somebody's lyrical, they have to figure out, okay, what does this remind me of, even though mm -hmm. there's no one like me? And that's not even a flex. That's just the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, as an artist, you have to find a way to separate yourself, and I stick out like the windowsill. Is it, when, you, when you're writing your music, is it something visual? You know, like, do you write the music for the music video, or do you just write music because of what's going on around you? Uh, it's more encompassing than that. When I started writing, it was just purely to be cathartic and get what was on my head out. Um, and over these last month, six months or so, I've found that intentionality in my music because most people do write to perform. I, I, in a way, do that, but I try to push the limits of what I can perform. Like, my breath control is really what I like to show off when I'm performing. Mm -hmm. So I'll do show tracks where just the beat and the hooker in the background and everything else is live. Mm -hmm. To prove to people, one, I know my music, and two, I'm not karaoke rapping. Like, this is real. Always been like that or something? Yes, saw, okay. that's always, always been something I've done. I mean, I just now have implemented the, the hooks. I used to want to do the whole song and <laughs> just have the yeah. beat in the background, but 
you know, you got to give yourself an opportunity to catch your breath and engage with the audience, whatever it is in that little 15 second time frame. Do you have pros and cons of touring life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the pros are the networking aspect, like being here with um, these dope artists that we've been with the last week, um, getting to go to a new city. Like we talked about earlier, um, it's a lot easier to pop off in a new city because no one's ever heard you before and there aren't any inherent biases against, you know, who you were before. Like where I'm from, Maryland and Philadelphia, like they're people who knew me before I made music. So they still don't really believe I'm taking this seriously or that they are, that they know I am serious about this. Mm -hmm. So those are the type of people, like when things happen for me later on, they're going to come back and be like, yo, I, you know, I always thought you was going to do this and never said anything about it. You know what I'm saying? But here from the first day, like I had all these people mob me after the performance talking about, yo, you different, man. You know, keep going. Old heads were like you the future hip hop type of shit. Which, you know, I appreciate that, but I'm just trying to take it one step at a time, man. Yeah. So success for you as an artist looks like what? Uh, to be honest with you right now, it looks like what uh, Currency is doing. Explain. Like, like to be able to use music as your primary job, be independent, and have a living off of that and a real fan base without having anybody's hands in your pot. Like, I do understand, and of course, I want to be able to build partnerships with labels, but my goal is to remain independent and mm -hmm. to do this on my own and learn using these labels and understanding how the industry works, the business, to be able to, like I said, put my window sill up. You have a plan. Absolutely. As, as my man Zoe knows, when we was in the club, I always got a plan. <laughs> I'm a calculated man. <laughs> yeah, we heard you, uh, what well, we've seen, you standing off in, to the corner in your own world. Oh, absolutely. Night. What was you doing? Scouting. Yeah, I was out there scouting. So what I did last night, which okay. you were yeah, talk about, to me. I, I was following um, Lionel Richie, the guy that owns the club, right? The white Sue can't dance for shit. He, uh, he was walking to the back with a bouquet of flowers. So I'm like, all right, well, clearly he about to give these to some chicks, right? So I just followed him. Mm -hmm. I just went back there and, you know, I saw the three uh, musketeers, we'll call them, sitting back there twerking and, and uh, you know, dancing and stuff. And shout out to Key because she was smart enough to bring them over to our section and give them free drinks, right? They yeah. was just looking to put something in their mouth. That's all yeah. it was. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny, though. It was a fun time. I, I enjoy Phoenix. Y'all have some good... Uh, clubs, great atmosphere. It's but what, what, what's interesting about you is that I feel like you have three different outlets that you can be very successful in. One, you a comedian. <laughs> like that's, that. that, that's, that's most important. Yeah, that comes from my family. I've, yeah, I've, it's your I've, personality. Yeah, my family just been roasting me my whole life, so I've just been putting it back out. Yeah. Two, yeah. ours, and then three, we've been sitting here watching football and you naming... Oh, people yeah. on the bench. When I was in college, my friends used to do this game where they just point at a player and say, what college you go to? I'd be like, oh, okay, uh, Quinn Miners. I do went to San Diego University State, whatever, you know. Yeah, but how do you keep up with that? Uh, it's hard to explain, man. I got a brain that just compartmentalizes so many, so many information, like just different things. So I haven't said this in a song yet, but there's going to get to a point where I'd be like, I got more uh, sports bars and beat ups. Because I can put that stuff in a song. Like I could chase a bag like Jamar. I got more eight bars than Lamar, like type of shit. It's just easy. All right, yeah, we're going to keep in contact. I, I need to, yeah, I need, it's, yeah, it's a lot I need to know from you. Yeah, I know. I'm, like, I'm an enigma. I understand that, even though I'm light skinned. I'm an enigma. Yeah. That's what it All is. right, where can the people find you out on social media? Word. Um, on Instagram, you can find me at TJ4PlayOfficial. That's the letter T, the letter J, the number four, P L A Y official. And on all streaming platforms, TJ4Play, as it says on the bunny right here, I'm an energizer. It's mm -hmm. good, y'all. It's your boy, DJ Pess. TJ. Appreciate you for having me, man. For real. No problem. Thank you. Even Lil' Kim said it's possible But until then, business is usual Stuck to the game like a net at the cuticle Went from cubicle to irrefutable Then tapping musical to grandpa's funeral